I like cappuccino and fish fresh from the sea. Chips from the casino, I'll wager won't be free. Been fish fresh from the sea. Right, so it's match day and welcome to the football referee. Right. Uh, so you welcome to the football referee with myself, Emmy Hickins, and and myself, Trevor Gear, and, and myself, Fred Madariola. Yeah, so we're a trio. Good, good, good. So uh, there was something that Trevor said last week um, while you wasn't here. I'd want Trevor to repeat it because he gave me so much pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> <Go on. laughs> what did you say about Femi last week? Go on. <laughs> you promised you wouldn't say, make me say that. <laughs> no, what I said was, what I said was, after our pre the discussion the previous week about the cup final, the FA Cup final, um, there were two of us who shall remain nameless who said Manchester City would win, and one <laughs> who will be named as Emmy. Uh, thought Man United would win, although he may have been a little bit biased, but there we are. But no, you did well, you know, M, M, you did very well to predict that. It wasn't very predictable by most people or by the odds involved, but well done. Yeah, you were right. Man United, in my opinion, deserved to win. They did. Yeah. And what did you say about Ferry not turning up? <laughs> that can make feel very bad. I don't actually remember saying anything. Perhaps I said jokingly, it's oh, it's not coming because, because it his is, team lost. It is, I it don't say, I don't it is say you, did, you didn't turn up because you. Because of your bad prediction, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I wouldn't have turned up either, really. <laughs> yeah, you're really milking this, Em, aren't you? <laughs> All I would say is a little bit of self defense here. Yeah, is that, yeah, I, I did. I, on paper, I believe Man City were the better team, and in reality, they are the better team, but. I did say complacency could creep in. And I do think, unusually, that Guardiola, his tactics in the, in the team he selected at, at the beginning were almost along the lines of, we've only got to turn up to win because, man, you haven't had a great season. Man City had. And, you know, I feel he should have started, for example, with Doku, who, who's a little magic man on the wing there. Um, but he had Guardiola who's a good player, but I don't think has the same penetration through. But really, for the first 10 or 15 minutes, I got a bit bored because City were just passing the ball to each other at the back. I know that's their possession game, but normally they then thrust through pretty quickly and often with De Bruyne or Haaland, they score a quick goal. But they didn't seem interested in quickening the pace. And I, I remember saying to those I was watching it with, you know, if they're not careful, man, you are going to grab hold of that ball and they're going to go through and score. And although I didn't mind who won, as I'm not a fan as such of either, yeah. I was sort of thinking, come on, man, you score. Because the game needed livening up. For, you know, yeah. for, for as long as there wasn't a goal, it became quite boring, I thought. It wasn't the best cup final. So I thought, man, you did deserve to win because they seemed to come out with the intention of that. Whereas City just played the ball around until they went behind and of course then they changed their game yeah I'm sure I quite I totally agree with you on that um, and, um, if, if you remember what I said when we made the prediction I said football is no mathematics yeah but on paper City all the way yeah and also sometimes on the field of play when a match starts and when match is on you look at a team and say, this team wants it more. Yeah. And on that day, United definitely wanted it more than City. They did. They, did, they yeah. wanted it more. And that, and, and that was the end result. Yeah. yeah. Just on the back of that, um, there's an article that I just want to share. Um, and it, it's talking about UEFA and, and, and Manchester United. So it's saying UEFA make their decision on potential ban on Man, Man United playing in the Europa League alongside Ineos or Nice with 
Yeah, yeah. I've seen They're that. Fall subject to certain conditions. I didn't know about this law or this rule. Um, did anyone know about this rule? Where? Yeah. Did, did you know? All right. Rule. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. I think it's more like if a team have another sub team right. in a okay. different. You, obviously, you cannot have uh, two teams. You cannot own two teams. Right. Yeah. In the same. Right. In the same. In the same league. But if you have, because UEFA is is a general overseer of uh, football a worldwide, I'll be in, 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 in Europe, FIFA is world, UEFA is in Europe. Yeah. If you have two teams in Europe, two teams you own in Europe, and the two teams are playing the same competition, it could be it could be Europa, it could. Being the Champions League. Then definitely, if there's any likely chance that the two teams are going to be playing each other, then one of the team has to drop out of the competition because there's conflict of interest. Wow! Yeah, I think that yeah. It's I the think same thing when 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 a team like Chelsea loans a player to a team like Newcastle. Right. And Chelsea is playing Newcastle. Obviously, the Chelsea player playing in Newcastle is not allowed to play against Good. Chelsea because there's com- there's going to be compromise. There's going to be conflict of interest. Right. So that's 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 the, that's what the rule is saying. Yeah, I think that explains it really well because I was I read it, I read through it, and I'm thinking Nice and Manchester United they have the same owner, you know, maybe shareholders, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think I understand it now. And and the other thing that um, that's been in the news lately is the <clears throat> is the um, the amount of um, uh, what do I how do I put it? But Man City seem to have a lot of a lot of um, is it violations on the yeah yeah FFP. yeah. A lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah, um, and I was just thinking, well, how did they let it get that far? With you know, they could have, they could have resolved it earlier, and and not have. But but do you think it affects the uh, the the play going forward? Do you think it affects the way the club is run? Do you think it affects the administration? What I mean, what impact is it going to have on on the? On the um, on the on the football team as a whole, is it is it just some hot air on 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 the, on the FA's part? What do you think? Well, I, I think from what I've read about it, I mean these right. things have been hanging over them, I don't know, for a year or more, and I think it's about 112 violations. Right. But all the way through, when questioned, the owners of Man City and I think Pep Guardiola have always said that they're not guilty of these things and they come up, they will come up with good answers to it. So they will avoid any sort of punishment. But I don't really understand why this hasn't been dealt with. Um, I can see perhaps they shouldn't have done it during the season, but then we know that both Everton and Notts Forest both lost points during the season because of their violation. But by all accounts, these are more technical things rather than whatever Everton and Forest were doing. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's not as if a date seems to have been set to sort this out once and for all. Yeah. Whether there will be points deductions. I mean, they can't do it retrospectively, I wouldn't have thought. Yeah. So, yeah. And, but I don't think it would affect the players. I, I think, well, you know, right. I think right. they're kind of their view probably as well. It's nothing to do with us. You know, we're going to play our game and so on. So, and maybe if it was a more serious set of wrongdoings, then it would have been dealt with before. So it may be, as they say, something more technical than than anything else. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking. I think Everton had points deducted. Was it were it this season or last season? Mm-hmm. They did this they, season. Yeah. Yeah, this season. This season, yeah. ten, ten points. Yeah, I think they had points. Yeah deducted as well so guess what's coming next friday 
next Friday. The Euros. The Euros. <laughs> the Euros yeah. Oh, I'm excited. Week. I- I'm excited. Any predictions? Any? Any? Anybody got any predictions for the Euros? I- I'm. I'm saying we better English. ask. We better I'm ask you because. Yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, you're yeah, the Mr. Right. Predictor. I'm saying. I'm saying England. England all the way. You know. And and I, I I'm saying I Italy, bit, Italy all the way. I know it's a bit biased, but there you go. I'm saying England all the way. So you're saying Italy all the way. Um, Italy all the way. Yeah, I know Trevor's sticking with. What are you me. saying, Femi? Sorry, Femi, I didn't hear that. Italy, Italy, Italy won in the they won in the last time, didn't they? So I'm going for Italy yeah. again. It's a good shout, I think. Italy. I thought England played. If you, I don't know whether you saw it. They played quite well the other night. I mean, I was pleased because two or three of the Palace players did very well. I thought Eze was excellent. Adam Eze Wharton, was good. He's, he's new. Yeah, he is good. And Adam Wharton was good. I, I think the England team have got a good chance. I do. But I always have this feeling that when we get near to the, you know, the Euros or the World Cup. I think the manager should be playing broadly the team he's going to play a, a few months before. He should have selected, OK, some people come online a bit later, but he should have broadly selected his team so they get used to playing together. And I did think the other night there were some good performances, but it looked like a, a bunch of strangers, in a way, playing together. And you need to get them knitted together as a team. So. If that happens, I think we've got as much chance as anybody else because we've got some. We're in a period of some very good footballers, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Adding to what you've said, Trevor, and I think what you've said is the undoing for England, and that's why England has not won anything in a long time. Now, <laughs> you've got a few days to the Euros. You must have your regular starting eleven. Yeah, absolutely. regular, absolutely. But and they don't do it. They don't do maybe it. Maybe they, they might. They might have one or two more friendlies before the Euros, and they're still going to use a bunch of different players again. Yeah. And when the Euros start, you now use a different bunch of players. Mm. Ha, where where is the continuity with your team? These players. Teams need to play together for a long yeah. time yeah. and master the act of passing even when you're not looking. You know, my my eyes closed on my back to the ball. Mm. I know where Carl Walker is going to be. Yeah. I know where yeah. Ryan Stalin is going to be. But when you don't play them together all the time, they get to the competition, mm. there's going to be flawed. Mm. That is the undoing for England. Yeah, 100%. Absolutely yeah, right. That's the yeah, and when when you think about and when you think about this squad, um, who would you, what two players would you include in the squad, for instance, Trevor? Including what in in, in the again? squad in the last squad in the squad oh, in the squad yeah. yeah. Because it's a, they reduce it now, don't they, from thirty-two to twenty-five or twenty-three, I think. I'm never quite sure why they have the bigger squad as they do. Why not just go for the the basic squad at the beginning? But be that as it may, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think there's one or two of the fringe players who obviously won't get in. But what did, what did you say? Which two players would I have in the squad? Yeah, would you? Have I, I certainly, with no bias, and I mean that, I would certainly put Eze in. Ever as 